Okay, so let's let's start from the beginning. I, I don't want to like be a, the spoiler guy for the story on on, on waves. Uh, al although you know, although the back cover says most of it anyway. Uh, yes. Uh, I, I would like I would like to start uh, not through surf but through through the comic book field or for through graphic design and illustration as well. Uh, how all all these visual art things start in your life? Um, I mean, if you if we're going all the way back, you know, like uh, sort of the prototypical story of you have like older brothers that show you everything that's cool. And um, my oldest brother, he's like 10 or 15 years older than me. And he, you know, he was a total Trekkie. He was a huge, like, Marvel DC video game nerd. Back before it was cool, like, in the 80s and 90s, he would, like, get beat up for the kind of stuff that he liked, you know, but now it's super cool. Anyway, he would bring me to comic book stores, and he would, like, it was really sweet. He'd have me and my brother draw and then he would like be like you should ink that and like we don't have any ink we would just use like big pens or whatever yeah. on top of graphite and yeah he, they really instilled like uh, the love of, of like comics in me and like it's it i also come from a kind of artistic family like my grandmother was a teacher and she was always making art and encouraging us to make art um so yeah i was always drawing and then um you know, in high school, I, I was drawing too much. So like, I got in trouble a lot for drawing in class. So then I sort of stopped. And it wasn't until community college that I started uh, drawing again, because the only class that I didn't hate was a printmaking class. Everything else was just like, really boring and didn't interest me. So then, um, yeah, from that class, I was really encouraged by a good teacher. You know, I learned how to do like screen printing and lithography and um, etching and stuff like that. And then he encouraged me to go to art school. So, you know, at art school, I was, my mind just was so expanded by everyone around because everyone is like, it's like Hogwarts. Everyone's like so talented, and magical, and like, you know, there's just so much talent. And uh, you're exposed to so many cool things like underground comics, animation, movies, film, photography, like anything you can think of. Like everyone has cool, they come, and they're like cool kids, you know? They like, they do cool shit, they like do graffiti and they skate and they play music and they're in bands, whatever. So um, yeah, that's sort of like where everything really exploded and that's where I really fell in love with comics again. Yeah, but, but there's one thing that you told right now that uh, stroke a chord on, you know, you said you did like Shiloh and lithography and this kind of, this kind of stuff. And I think this really, resonates on, on on waves on waves i think you have a lot of that on, in, in, the, in the waves itself uh, and some of the panels you have this kind of stamp kind of thing that look to yeah it. What, like the first assignment i did was like a, a linoleum cut i don't know how you say it in brazilian portuguese but um we did like linoleum cuts and wood cuts and i was just like i loved how you had to really work to carve out a line and like it had to be concentric because the way you know, you cut yeah. out a line and then like the thing is gone. So it has to be sort of this contour. It has to be this sort of um, vol vol voluminous yes. uh, drawing style. Uh -huh. and I guess, yeah, I kind of carried that into the way I do inking. And, you know, it's very reminiscent of Charles Burns and Daniel Klaus and, you know, the classic cartoon guys. And then a little bit of Japanese uh, woodwork, woodcut. Um, I really gravitated to like how, how heavy it is graphically. You know, it's just like stark black and white or in the book, you know, obviously it's like monotone, just like one color over um, different shades of the same color. So. When you usually you do woodwork and you have a lot of angle lines, you know, a lot, a lot of sticky angle lines. And most of your stir, stuff, it's curvy, you know, it, it's more fluid. I know that the titles, the title have a lot to do with it, but it's it's hard to have this kind of woodwork style and at the same time have a a, a wavy and, and 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 more light lines, you know. For sure, you know, I always see artists that have such pristine lines that I'm really trying to mimic that. And 
it's it's maybe an unhealthy obsession because maybe it doesn't matter that much you know as long as like the idea gets across some some way and people are affected emotionally it's maybe i'm like too focused on that but i really for some reason i really care about stuff like this no it, it's funny because most of the brazilian artists a lot of them that are going to be at the con they they go the opposite you know they 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 go so much deep on detail then sometimes they lose yeah. the, the storytelling, you know, they, they lose the focus on storytelling a little bit because they are too much cross hatching and detail. Sure, sure, sure. Like yes. Anatomy and stuff like that. Some people are amazing draftsmen and women, but maybe they're not the best storytellers. And some people are like really great storytellers, or maybe they're not the best drawing uh, uh, drawers or whatever. But it's cool. It's cool to see when there's a balance, you know, like if, if uh, you can do sort of both. I don't consider myself a writer, so like the, the the words were so sparse, and it was hard for me to like. Um, I don't know. Some of some people have referred to my book like more of a poem because it's so like it's yeah. less writing and more images, and I don't know. It was just, it was hard to strike that a good balance. Is the is the graphic design feel that you have? You know, uh, something that because I work in advertising for a couple of the years, I have a graphic design degree. And I have yep. the sense that you did a lot of that before going to this book. You know what I mean? To balance, uh, the way you balance yeah. stuff and take stuff out. Sure. I did. I did take a ton of graphic design classes. Um, obviously, sometimes it like the style of graphic design at your school can really inform like the choices you make, and um, sometimes it's like really even and imbalanced, and like you get like rule of thirds, yada yada. But um, the way I wrote the book was more so like. I had d done thumbnails to like figure out the flow from page to page, like how a spread would look. And like, it was important for me to like have a good rhythm throughout the book. Mm -hmm. um, just so like, it made sense as you turn the page, like certain things would reintroduce, I don't know, so, like people would be able to uh, follow the story in a cool way and not get bored or. Yeah, there's another aspect to that cross my mind when when I read the book is that is the editing you know sometimes it looks too cinematic you know like you thought about that as a, a fake doc like a, uh, yeah 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 sure it's a story actually you know it's a, of course a love story for surf and, and for her but uh, besides that you looks like you have a cinematic feeling on why you switch the pages and the order of story and, and such do you have the cinematic yeah. thing all the for doing this uh, totally I mean all, so much of the book was editing um, a lot of pages sometimes I had put so much text and it was like such a, le a hard lesson to learn where it's like sometimes it's redundant like the reader can make connections that you don't need to spell out for them and sometimes it's more powerful to just have um, someone see what's going on and they feel the emotions of the scene rather than like me telling them what they should be feeling at this moment, but it sort of takes its natural course. But totally, I was watching so many films and like trying to figure out how someone can even tell a story because this is my first book. I've never really written, I, I mean like in for school and stuff, but I didn't, I didn't have the slightest semblance of how to arrange a narrative and like I took a lot from like a lot of authors that I love and a lot of films that I enjoy like um for instance like Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind is like one of my favorite movies um and it's there's like it's told non-chronologically it's told in like a way that um it just drops you in the middle of a of a, of a narrative and you have no idea where you're at and that's kind of the cool part is like the viewer or the reader is piecing things together and they're a part of the process and i think maybe it it helps to engage people that way and i did mo more editing and revisions than i spent time drawing the book like it took more than half of the time to write and rewrite and like pass back my um, rough drafts to my editor and like sometimes they'd have feedback like things didn't make sense to them because in my mind the story is so clear but it's my life yeah, so, yeah they needed to give me some feedback in that way but yeah it's cool that i appreciate you noticed that because editing was probably my best friend for this project it was it, i think it's what really made certain chapters sing and like kept the pace 
going in like a good rhythm. The other thing that we noticed like is the colors, like you decide to do just mostly two colors, like earth tones and the bluish tones. And uh, how you come up with that? You know, the, the past, sure. the, the, not the present, you know. Not wait, 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 yes, yes. Um, it was like, on one hand, it was like economical because time-wise I just had such a tight deadline that like, how can I make this interesting but with the least amount of colors? It's efficient to do it this way, but also there's a purpose to it. Like it, it helps ground the reader in one narrative as opposed to like having them sift through this thing without some sort of um, organizing pattern or theme or something. So it helps like the reader stay in a certain part of the story. And it was like a visual cue to like Mark. let people know where they're at. And then like color wise, you know, it's pretty on the nose. Like it's a sepia tone type, yeah. dusty orange because, you know, it's rem reminiscent of like fraying old newspapers and old films. And it's, it, it sort of like evokes that old timey feeling for the reader. And then the turquoise blue, there's like a, a bunch of reasons. Like the corny, like honest reason is like, I was super sad obviously and I felt blue. and. And also it was Kristen's favorite color, like blue. And um, it was like the color of the sea in in my area sometimes. And, but basically, you know, it's kind of basic. There's not. Yeah, so I think that's the time I start talking about story because all the questions that I'm thinking about your comment now are related to it. For those who don't know stuff that we're gonna talk briefly is, is that, you know, this book, it's, it's about a big pain that you suffer you know, the biggest one that everybody can feel and, and a lot of people will relate. And sadly, nowadays, a lot, lot of people will relate to that. Yeah. So, yeah. so unfortunately, uh, for a point of view that your timing resonates with a lot of stuff for this book right now. Yeah, for sure. I, I think like we've all had an insanely tragic and long and hard, depressing year yeah um but yeah this story not to give too much away it's like it's a very heavy story it's like it's one that i was like they first wanted me to just do like a children's book about surfing heroes throughout history so i sent them like a dummy and like just like sample pages of what that could be and then they changed their mind and like they're like why don't you why did you want to do this like what's your connection to surfing why are you so obsessed with this thing and what they didn't know is that my girlfriend, um, is it cool that I say this? Like, it's, yeah. maybe it's not that much of a spoiler. Um, no, yeah, it, as I'm saying, it's, it's on the back cover and it's on, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah so she, she passed away from cancer, like right when I was um, in the last year of my school. Um, so then, like, I got the book deal and they didn't know that. And they didn't know that she was the one that got me into surfing. Um, and they were just like, you should explore the idea of making like a graphic memoir where you can like intertwine um, surfing and, and, and your very recent loss. And um, they, I was like, I don't know, because I'm like, I don't think I have enough distance from this thing yet. It's been only maybe a few months. And then, um, I even typed up an email and I was like, thanks for the opportunity. Like, I'm really fucking scared to do this project. So, uh, you know, I, I like, I'm out. But then I thought about what my girlfriend Kristen would have thought and it's sort, of, sort of like her dream for me to like make a comic book. And she always joked that she wanted one about her. And hmm. so then I just tried, you know, I just tried and uh, now we're here talking about it. But yeah, it's it, um, it's funny yeah. because it, it resonates to me in, in another level because I lost my two sisters, and oh, one, wow. one was on bike accident, and I, you know it's like you the the oldest one he was she was ten years older than me and taught me a lot of stuff like she introduced me to European comics and stuff, and she died as well in a car accident. But uh, what, what, yeah. what I want to say is actually it's a, it's a really positive thing because you were able to do this. I wasn't able to do a comic about that. I, I, I Maybe now I am. 
because now it's almost, I don't know, 15, almost 20 years later. Now I am able to do this. It's, it's interesting that you describe it that way because to me it was also escapism to do the book because in a way I wasn't, I was dealing directly with what you were feeling as well when you lost your sisters, but like I buried myself in this book. Like I was spending time with their memory and stuff, but I was isolating myself. Like I didn't, I wasn't seeing anyone. All I did was work on this comic. I, wor I worked full time. I was designing shoes nine to five, five o'clock hit. I just stayed in my office and worked on the book till like midnight. I'd drive to my office on weekends, work on the book. I wouldn't talk to anyone. Maybe I'd go surf, but man, I don't know if it was all that healthy, but it, it did help, you know, mentally for me, like to just be so tired that you don't think about like all the pain that you're in. No, it's it's so funny because I did exactly the opposite. I, I, I assembled a bunch of friends, artists, and we did a studio and I I, I, I surrounded myself with a dozen people twenty four seven. It's yeah, funny sure. the way each one yeah. deals with it, you know, differently. But how how long it took for you, you know, to write about this and, and have the green light for the to like like this this is good for publishing. Total it was about like two and a half to three years. Mm -hmm. um, one and a half years was spent um, writing, just writing and researching, and and then there was like the drawing. Like I finally, after like I don't know how many revisions they they sent, it was a lot. It was always just like every month, it's like okay, here's my revision, and then they're like, okay, we'll work on it more. And then um, uh, I finally got the green light, and then I had like a year to draw and ink and like. Uh, color and do the cover and do the the uh, fly leaves and papers and also all this promotional stuff they needed. So it was like, there, you know, even when you finish the book, there's still pro post production stuff. So that's why I said like two and a half to three. Because if you if you include all the stuff like all the merchandise and the promo and the flyers and the the, the book plates and uh, whatever, it maybe like three years total. What about you? What's a turnaround for a book? No, it's idea? funny because it, uh, here in Brazil, that we have a lot of guys that do everything, but at the same time, we have so many people that work for American comics, North American comics, uh, and guys that work for some Brazilian publishers that are small teams. So okay. we we have both. We have both. Yeah, I love it. But yeah, I mean, if the, if I want, if you like, if it's like an advice type question for up and coming students or something. Comics take a long time if you're on your own. And it, you know, I guess it depends on your style too. Some people can crank out like um, a series really fast and it just depends on your style and what your end game is. But you, you, know, spend, you, you spend drawing and doing the book, you know, three years mostly. So, uh, but yeah, besides, yeah, yeah. That, besides that, you were surfing. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Sure. 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 And the book, uh, I, I read that it was supposed to be about Tom Blake, and then you, you know, in the beginning you talk, you talk about Duke, and you know, you told already that the publisher noticed, you know, but how far along the way you have this idea for doing a, a book about Tom Blake and and all that, and how you know, it's a little intimidating because Brazil is like this surfing mecca, you know. Um, but it's cool that like I'm getting ahead of myself, but basically like there's a lot to talk about in surfing and surfers know that. And, uh, it wasn't my idea to make it like a history and like a personal thing. It was, like I said earlier, it's like, it was the publisher that was like, you should try and link that and they find a way. They gave me books of like novels where people, there was a book called H is for Hawkins. And it's about this woman that's like, grieving the death of her father, but she's also like learning to hawk, like, she, you know, like a hawk that like hunts. Oh, really? and stuff. Yeah, so like she's dealing, she wrote a book about how she lost her father, but also through her time learning how to hunt with a hawk or take care of birds, um, she was able to deal with her grief. And like, that was sort of a template for me. It was hard because they're like, oh, you know, surf history, like figure out a way to, to integrate surf, the history of surfing, which is a big history, and it's not it's not just one person's history. It's like Polynesian, Brazilian, um, you know, the world. There's so many stories, and the reason why it's Duke and Tom is like 
that's a mentor and then a like a pupil and someone that really looks up to one other person and i was like i i think i can relate to that that's a relationship that i had with people and especially with kristen so like i loved her and looked up to her and adored her and like that there was that thread so then once i had that thread i was like okay well instead of condensing thousands of years of you know surf history into like a book that may make no sense like duke and tom me and kristen there's a parallel of uh reverence between two people and i, I was like that there's a book that maybe might make more sense than me and like short story short short answer to a in the beginning you you don't pick that up the relationship at all you know that you do about the past what's going on and, and i think i think you did a good job on on you know narrowing down to to the end I know. Thanks, know, like, that means a lot. Yeah, because cool. you know, at the beginning you're like, okay, it's cool. It, the, you know, you see the story going on and it's your story going on, but it's hard to relate. And then, and then it relates. You know what I mean? Then it starts to make more sense. And I think that's awesome. Thanks, dude. I mean, like, I used to play a lot of music. I played the drum. I was like in a bunch of punk, like, you know, noise punk bands and like indie bands or whatever. But you know there's like an idea and it's also in film and stories, but you know, a crescendo, like, I feel like it's a slow, burn. this book is sort of a slow burn and then maybe it makes sense at the end. Like, but it's also sort of like, there's a climax, you know, every, every story should have like, you know, a breaking point, boiling point, whatever you want to call it. But that's sort of how I felt about it. It was like, just like a lot of like a okay, I love groaning. It. Groaning. But as you go, like you, as you said, like when you start really trying to communicate a deeper level in music, it's hard to stay flat. You know what I mean? Even if it's hardcore, or it's hard to stay in the same tempo the whole time. You start to start. You want to say something, so yeah. you 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 start to wave that. You know, you start you 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 start you start to change that Ramon's view of four by four the whole time. <laughs> You wanna, you wanna change some bits and parts to show what you're feeling. So uh, I think I got what you're saying about the book now. Yeah, I love that you made that connection. That's cool. Yeah, it's a, yeah you will need to learn more chords than just like the three yeah. power chords, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's funny because uh, when I was a teenager, I have a small uh, bar, you know, really, oh, small really? Bar that we have some local punk bands playing the whole night. So, and- Sick. That's a story that it's easy because it's it's just closed down. You know, we just got broken, shut down the place. But so that's a story that I know I can write in comics because it's it's about good memories that stuff that I live and uh, and a story that nobody told about those bands and stuff. So that's easy. Uh, it would just flow. But I think in your case, I think you 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 might have a lot of. Uh, times that you froze that you choke and then you got back to it you know it's not that kind of book that you just go i don't know how like when people lose someone you're sort of like you're it's your person you know you so your person that you lost but the world keeps going you know it's like you're you're holding on but people have the luxury of moving forward in their lives so like for me i think Yes, there were starts and stops the way you're describing, but mostly it was generally like uh, it, it flowed out pretty, pretty naturally because I was living it. You know, I think that's like a good thing about having written it while I was going through that, because so much time has passed now that if I, you know, I think I would remember it, but maybe I wouldn't remember it as clearly as I did at the time that I was like really, really down and, and like depressed and stuff. but. Yeah, I mean, it was it was hard because sometimes you didn't want to revisit it, but it was also good because you get to like, you know, you get to write about your favorite parts of your favorite person, and there's like there's something very healing and and uh, comforting in that. Um, generally, it was pretty easy. I would say the history part was kind of harder because it's not my story, you know. It was like. I had to do a lot more research to figure out like what was going on and who who did who like influenced who and like who who lived where yada yada. But one thing that I'm curious about that like 
do you love to draw and surf to be in the zone or is different you know like to be out yeah. to be in the zone because if you surf you gotta be in the zone otherwise you're gonna fall anyway that's the beauty i mean i think that's also like it's the escapism we're talking about like some people get that from art and they're drawing and that's like their place to be it's their quiet place it's their place to like really focus and sort of ha not have your the, the the chatter of the world is silenced when you're with your pen and paper for some people for me surfing is that because like like you said if you're not paying attention you will drown or you'll get burned by someone or like you'll whatever something will happen you got to be focused and like it's like you're 100 percent living you're like it's people always say like some of the most uh vivid times they feel alive is like when they almost die surfing you know because you're you're really you're really like keen like, and aware of what's going on i think i think maybe surfing and skating is more of me living um i love art with all my heart but it's also more of a job for me because i get paid uh -huh. to do it and um maybe it wasn't that way way when i was younger but like you know i always hear the stories about cartoonists that spend their lives like building this beautiful universe of theirs and then they look up and like their children are grown and like their wives are like super old and like sometimes they're i mean if you read the latest adrian tomany book um the life of the long distance cartoonist he i think he just sort of addresses that question for all of us that are doing this kind of work where it's like you know at the end of my life can i look back and be happy with how i spent it and if you can that's awesome like that's what you should have been doing but for some people like maybe they'll regret having spent so much time like focusing on pen nibs and brushes and, and like panels but like i don't know I, I think, right. or, uh, or any other job that you were just yeah down to. yes yeah anything that could go for any it's not just cartooning that's like an accountant or a yeah. veterinarian whatever yeah so for me i would say surfing and skating is like that's what i want to be doing because like i know that i can't do it forever I know that like, you know, I'm gonna, so, yeah, maybe so. I, my body won't work that way anymore. But uh, even, you know, I don't know, I love both. But like, I find myself drawing less for fun these days. And it's always for work. For instance, the reason I'm late talking to you is because like, I've been so freaking busy here in France, I'm in Paris, and like, the success of in waves is so overwhelming. And like, I had no expectations of it. Zero. Like, I think, you know, best case scenario, someone cares. Someone says they, you get a like on Instagram, whatever. Like, but like, uh, you just, you keep your expectations low and you'll, you'll be a happier person. I think it's like, man, shit yeah. can, uh, you get, you can just gotta be grateful for whatever you get. And, and it's, a, you know, I, you can be the most talented in person in the world, but there's, there's a ton of luck and timing involved. It's, yeah, it's like it's beyond us. Yeah, a lot of time it's beyond us. We 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 can decide a lot of things in our life, and that's how it goes. But you yeah. know, uh, I, I uh, talk about Paris. Uh, awesome, there you there, and you know, you I, I saw that you, you're having a really nice exhibition there. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I, I want a, one of those skateboard shapes, you know. They look Dude, really I awesome. know. I need, to, I need to send you one. But uh, it, it looks like it's a, it's a success. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's be nice what I, 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 I look at the web. And what, do you have any, any more plans for another book? How, how is it going right now for you? It's great. I mean, thanks for saying all that. Like, I mean, I think I don't know what it is but um you know in france the book sort of exploded you know for a ton of reasons i think it was like timing was one thing and another was uh just uh the culture here in france i'm sure you're aware like maybe you've been to angoulême and all these different like uh, they call it bd band destiné like comic festivals and um people just are there's a hunger for comics and there's a hunger for graphic novels, any, any, any sort of like sequential art they love. And they, they like, they sort of elevate comic art to like something yeah. that's very respectable. And they really, they really admire comic artists. 
for me, things are good, man. I mean, the show is going to be cool. I did a bunch of ink drawings for a comics art gallery here called Gallery Barbier, and they're psyched. Like, they're, they've sold a bunch of pieces already, and, like, the board, they, they kind of pulled out all the stops. They made a book, another book, version of the book with, like, a new cover. All the drawings from the show are in the book, and then they made skateboards, and they made uh, wow. screen prints, and they did a bunch of shit, and they, like, they want me to make another skateboard because they already sold out of skateboards so that like they can oh that's awesome yeah actually they're, yeah, thanks, they're a really good gallery they know about comic books you know they they know yeah, they're yeah they know the shit they, they really know how yeah. to do it you know yeah they like you know they this is a place that like they they you know is like uh heavy metal type artists from the yeah. 80s and stuff like all those people show at this like Inky Bilal and um, yeah, he is awesome. Blut, Blut, yeah, Blut, yeah. You, I'm sure you know all these guys, and like, it's so surreal to be amongst them because it's like I did one book and like it was a school project, and now I'm like showing right before Inky Bilal's show. So it's very <laughs> strange. <laughs> it's cool. very, very weird, man. It's awesome, but it's it's so surreal. But yeah, I mean, uh, in terms of another book, I do have plans. I love memoir and I love real stories. Um, so I might explore another uh, sort of story like that. Um, I've been uh, writing a lot, but nothing concrete yet. I also am interested in like short stories too. So maybe it's a project that won't take you no, know, X right. amount of years. That's the one that I'm releasing here right now. Oh, sick. Yeah. Yeah, it's the first time I did a book with small tales, like 10 page yeah, tales. Yeah. Just yeah, one, yeah, yeah. you know, it might be nice if you was exercise with start, short stories because I'm trying to do that right now. It's so cool because now that I have all the five stories together, like, oh, I think this might work better than that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you compare sure. I mean, the yeah. same book, like, oh, you know, so and I, you can you can always branch off. Like you can even take one one that you really loved and then expand it. And but that's yeah. cool, man. Yeah. I love that you did that. Like it sounds. I, yeah, I, I wish I knew more to you. Away for the interview, but you know, we we're talking about future plans and stuff. And I say, no, man, I want to hear more about you. Like I'm, <laughs> I, I'm loving this conversation, and I'm like, oh, I awesome. wish I could go to Brazil and just kick it with you. Yeah, and awesome. like. Thanks for the awesome book that you did. I know that it took you like three years, but it was worth it for guys like me. It, it, it means a lot to me coming from like, you know, you're like, a, in my eyes, you're like a professional comic artist. So it, 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 your, your words hold a lot of weight for me. So thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, have, have a great time in Paris and see you yeah, man. then. Man. Dude, Brazil, it's, I would love to visit you guys. Like I know there's a like, such a bustling skate scene down there too and man you you you, you have a great publisher in brazil like your editor he he's a french guy so you have a oh yeah yeah he's a he, he's the one that told me about you you know like wow hey, we're gonna have this new book you gotta take a look yeah ah, gonna... shit. <laughs> damn it's, so, dude, again it's the french the french keep like yeah yeah. The, 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 yeah that's that's awesome man they have a really thank good, you they have a really good eye for good comic and your comic is really good right nemo is it you pronounce it nemo nemo and, and the, yeah. the the editor the book is called i know i know the, mm -hmm. the, yeah i know yeah cool man you're in good hands here <laughs> Sick. <laughs> that's good to know all right. Yeah, man. Let's go. Let's. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, visit you. We'll jam. All right, man. See you soon, then. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Bye.